Well, here is what we are working on today. We are going to put the box on here and then this job's gonna be done. You excited to have this job done? So excited. So excited? Yeah. So we painted everything up here yesterday. We had to take the rail system off of the chassis. We painted that separate from the chassis and we just got done getting everything reassembled. Then we had to weld the rail system down to the hoist here in the front. We ended up uh, running a wire wheel down the frame here. I think I showed you that in this last episode, if you will. We wire wheeled the, the surfaced uh, rust off of the frame, and then I primed everything and painted it. Even painted the front bumper. The truck looks like a brand new truck now. I, I said it in the last clip. I think my uncle got the, be the better of the three trucks here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down to where the silage box is in the bunk. We'll back up to it. We'll pull the silage box on and then get it bolted down. What we have to do to the silage box is we have to uh, paint the spots on the box where we welded the uh, brackets to match these bolt tabs here. And we also need to put the mud flaps on the silage box as well. We have, to have the brackets, we just welded the brackets on there. We need to paint those brackets and get the mud flaps on. So we did a pretty good job, I think, of getting enough paint on this valve. I had said in the last clip that these valves are hard to keep paint on. There's just a lot going on there and the, the heat and whatever, the paint kind of flakes off. So we're hoping them, the paint stays on the valves. Uh, Sarah's got the valve uh, sections identified as to each what as to what each valve does um, I see this one here the, the tailgate I didn't have it uh, written down you should put transfer underneath that as well this tailgate function will also uh, run the, the a flopper plate back and forth on the manure tank to go from transfer to uh, spread. We've got to um, put a couple of fittings on here that I forgot about uh, for the airlocks on the uh, truck rather than having the hoses direct hook direct hook we're going to have a couple of oh, like air tool fittings here that are going to plug into them holes so i i kind of thought these holes would just be open but we actually found a use for them so i wasn't thinking about that for whatever reason um, it slipped my mind so when he takes the silage box off there's a couple of quarter inch hoses here that go to the pneumatic locks for the tailgate he needs to be able to unhook and hook that up uh, when he takes the silage box off. And I need a uh, plug for this um, 3 8 female uh, coupler. This just this is the, um, oh, what do you call it, case drain for the manure pump on the uh, manure tank. This just ends up going back to... Uh, uh, it goes back to the, the tank there. So we've got that plumbed in here uh, somewhere. Where the heck do I have it plumbed back into? I've got it plumbed in right here. So that uh, returns back into the, into the system there. So we'll go down and put the box on and we'll show you what that process is like, right? And then you get to do some painting and put mud flaps on. Yeah. All, all excited to do that. Well, all right, we'll join back up with you once we get down to 
the bunk and we'll slide that box on. Now we're going to put the silage box on. We've got the silage box setting on legs, the flatbed setting on legs. However, the tank is not. Uh, they didn't deliver the legs with the tank, so we'll have to lift the tank up with a forklift and the telehandler back his other truck underneath that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get backed in underneath it. We're going to uh, hook the winch cable on and then once the winch cable is tight we can back under a little farther get the legs released or take the legs off and I'll, we'll be able to get it up in the air enough to get them out from underneath it and then we'll pull the box onto the chassis get it bolted down and to take and then we'll take it up to the shop
All right, I think we have a problem with the other half of this clip, but at any rate, it is what it is. So we've got this box on there up to this point. I don't know how much of this process you guys seen, but um, we pulled it onto the chassis. We've got a couple of the bolts setting in there, and now we're gonna take it up to the shop. And we have to get some primer on the mountain tabs and this uh, box tube piece that we put on there to accept the actual stands that the body sits on. And then we've got the mud flat brackets that we need to get some primer on as well. Get them on there. And then we've got the safety prop rod that is welded on there. We need to get some primer on that as well. And some paint. And then this is gonna be done. So, like I said, we'll get this up to the shop and uh, finish. We've got maybe a half an hour's worth of uh, work left to do to it. And then this project is done. fit up here and this will be done we'll plug our wire harness in plug the tailgate in and then we'll be done well we are finishing things up for today we've got this truck done however we need to get either that muffler extension shortened and put back on there or we need to put a sharp 90 on it. I haven't figured out what I want to do there, but Sarah's got the mounts all painted, got the decals on there for the hoist, the Hargan Weldon truck body video, uh, sticker on there. We ended up getting the mud flaps on, and we also have everything plugged into the rear. I do need to get a 3 8 plug for that case drain for the um, manure pump, that is. We've got the, um, we ended up occupying these holes here. I wasn't thinking about the um, actual lock cylinder itself. And that is right up in the, um, Right up in the bottom of the bed here, and then that's got quarter inch air lines going to it. And we're somewhat color coded on the um, ends there so we know uh, what's what. I don't know, can we talk about this mixer, Nate, or is it somewhat top secret or what? But this is somewhat in the research and development stages here and we're going to talk a little bit about it but we can't disclose too much information on it now this mixer wagon we ended up putting a uh wall liner in it what was that three years ago and then we ended up putting a stainless liner in it here about a month ago we started to see some issues with the mixing process, it would puke out grain uh, right when you opened up the door. And what, had been, what has been happening is we have too much of a gap between the door and the mixing screw. We have put uh, 
taller kicker plates on there that alleviated the problem for a while but uh, this has mixed so many pounds of feed at more than most mixers out there and the other thing that we're running into with this mixer wagon is the door slides are wearing out and the door is moving out too far and it's allowing too big of an area to pocket the grain and it is allowing uh, a spot where it can't mix too awful well so what we did is we cut an opening in the top of the door we added on the top of the opening and then we added on to the top of the door ah, if i can get climbed up on here and then what we did is we ended up putting a couple of pieces of rubber on the bottom of the door and then what that's going to do is it's going to allow that area we think anyways to uh get out into the screw a little bit so it can come around and mix that up we'll have to see how this does in the morning what i would like to see supreme do is make this door adjustable and i'm gonna have to pass some of this information along to them they need to make the door taller the opening larger and then have the ability to put something on the bottom of the door or something that you can adjust later on the trouble with, that we're going to have next with this is we've got two inches of rubber on the bottom of that door and it's going to have stuff get caught on the top of it maybe not but we might need to put a tapered wedge on there so that the stuff slides off of it we'll have to see how this works come morning so we've got a little bit left to do here before we finish up this video we will touch base with you in the morning when we get mix and feed with that see how that does on the tail on the feed as the sun comes up so we got some light and then we'll have to get this outside and show you what things look like when it's outside the shop another project that has been getting worked on over in the other bay here jared ended up putting a panel hook plate on this mac this has got somewhat of a two the the frame is too short this is the actual length of the frame right here and if uh if he would have just put a panel hook plate on there he wouldn't have had enough enough room what this here is is the frame extension from his freight liner he had a guy interested in buying the freight liner it's got the front diff or is it the rear diff rear rear, rear on the freight liner has got something wrong with it it's it needs rebuilt uh it's unhooked currently right now and the guy was dicking around he wouldn't give him an answer whether or not he was going to buy it so jared cut the back tail end of that frame off that was a single frame and um it's in good shape so jared cut the inner frame out of this stuffed this one inside then what he's going to do is he's going to run a half inch plate down through here going to stop it about here and then what he'll do is he'll put a a gusset piece on the here taper it like that and that will give the uh, plate enough reinforcement and then he'll put a ramp on here up in here like this another half inch piece of plate lay that down weld that on top and that will completely uh, reinforce that so that's what we've been doing or what jared's been doing over here and this is something that we'll probably use maybe once <laughs> we ended up putting a when i put the c5 together i put a a big panel hook on that one as well that one's a little heavier than this one and uh 
We've used it a couple times. I pulled the frack tank with it. What else did we do with it? I think your grandfather used it a couple of times on the tag along trailer. But we've got air coming to the back um, on the C5, and then Jared's going to have to bring uh, air to the back of this one as well. So tomorrow we'll get that truck there outside, raise it up and down. Let me get that flatbed in here and work on that, right? Get that done so we can work on the corn planter. So we will touch base with you tomorrow and we'll finish out this video here uh, tomorrow morning. We also put uh, oil, we topped this uh, hoist reservoir or this hydraulic reservoir off. We've got all oil clear up to oh, the top there. And it took about seven gallons to uh, get the oil back up to that point. That's what the hydraulic hoses held for oil was seven gallons. Yeah? yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We are just pulling up with the first load on this white mixer wagon since we've done the work to it. So this is going to be the moment of truth. So I'll engage the PTO. We'll open the door and we'll see what things look like here. Alright, looks pretty good. We'll get through uh, feeding here and we'll check back in with you when we get some daylight here. Alright, so we have just pulled in the barn with the last load of feed for the morning here. And it has the, it has improved mix quality of what comes off the mixer right first thing here pretty decently so we'll get this fed off and then we'll head into the shop we've got to pull John John's truck out and start on the next project so we'll join up with you in a little while here Well, we've got this all done. Sarah ended up going around with uh, around the uh, mounting tab. She's got all them painted, and now this truck body is all done. We've got to add on to the flatbed yet. We'll get on that here. Uh, in a little while, we do have another project to work on first thing. But this project's done, and it is all downhill from here. We ended up uh, running around the frame with, we ended up getting that all painted. We hit the front bumper, the shroud going over the exhaust. And this is all ready to go here. So we'll jump up in, we'll show you the PTO switch, and then Sarah's gonna go ahead and run through the functions on it. Then show, oh, I got a pressure gauge hooked in here. I got to pull that out. I'm gonna pull that out. 
run this cap in and uh, got it ready to go here so we're just gonna jump up inside we'll show you what the PTO switch looks like I've showed that here in the past but for those of you that didn't catch that video so here is the PTO switch That'll engage the PTO, which has the pump mounted to it, and then the different hydraulic functions are here up in the headliner. We've got the tailgate locks. Uh, the tailgate uh, switch for raising and lowering the tailgate, and then the hoist. And then we've got a winch switch, and then these other functions here are for the manure tank. Uh, this tailgate valve um, will double as a transfer valve on the manure tank meaning we will be using that valve uh when the manure tank is on there because you need five functions to run uh the manure tank so why don't you jump up in there sarah and uh raise the tailgate and then uh go ahead and raise the box We ended up slowing the tailgate down so it didn't raise too fast because of the size of the hydraulic system that's on this truck. It would rapidly open that gate and you could run the potential of uh, blowing the cylinders and or breaking the tabs off. The, um, the cylinder tabs when you put the tailgate back down. So she's just going to go ahead and raise this all the way up. This uh, overhang on the box, in other words, from the tail hinge to the back of the body is uh, 28 inches. And this hoist is dumping right around 54 degrees. So it has a 54 degree uh, dump angle. And... Um, the longer the overhang you have, the closer it gets the tailgate to the ground. Now, once the load is dumped off here, this could potentially drag over the top of uh, the feed. If the concrete is a lot higher than where the truck is at just because it's not on the level here. So go ahead and put her down. So that is going to do it for this video. She'll park the uh, truck across the road here and we'll get on to the next project here. That's a 26 foot box with seven foot sides, eight foot wide on the inside. And uh, it'll hold like 50, oh, I should do the math on that quick. What will this hold? 